guys, today we are doing a Q&A. So I asked you over on my TikTok and over on my Instagram stories any questions you might have about crystals or Reiki or energy healing in general, and we are going to dive right into those. So let's get started. So the first question comes from Patricia over on TikTok. She said, everyone talks about grounding. I cannot for the life of me do the visualization with it. Um, I totally relate. Visualization does not come very naturally to me, but the good news is you don't have to use a visualization practice to practice grounding. Grounding is simply the practice of bringing your awareness into the present moment. And we use the body to do that because your body, it can only be here and now, right? Your body can't be in the future, it can't be in the past. So one technique that I like to do is just rubbing your feet on the floor. That's a good one because it brings your attention directly into your toes and into the soles of your feet. Another one is sweeping. So you can sweep almost like you have sand on your body and you're trying to brush it off and do your whole body head to toe. You could also do any form of stretching or yoga and just focus on what muscle is experiencing sensation. Grounding is really just a fancy term of like coming home to your body. So whatever helps you do that, is grounding. What crystals can we work with when we are having turbulent times at work? So it really depends on what kind of turbulent times you're having. Like if you work with people, I always recommend jet because it's sort of like the crystal uh, representation of the phrase, I'm rubber, you're glue, right? Their energy bounces off of you. I would say any sort of turbulent times, you're going to want something that's protective and grounding. So black tourmaline, jet, obsidian, onyx, any of those really, really dark stones are gonna help you with that. So Courtney asks, how did I start Reiki? For me, my first experience with Reiki was at a yoga retreat. Many of you know I suffered from chronic hip pain in my early 20s, and I really could not find relief through any, you know, medical means. I saw so many different specialists, like any kind of medical doctor you can think of, you name it. I was in their office at one point in time when I was 23, 24 years old, and none of them could give me any relief. And also none of them could tell me why I was having so much pain. Like it was day and night, no matter what I did. So I ended up in a Reiki session and that was the first time that I really felt relief. Like I was not in pain the next day and it just blew my mind. So that kind of <laughs> led me to tripping down a rabbit hole that I never came out of. Does Reiki help show you which Claire is more prominent for yourself? So I assume this means like clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, kind of like how your intuition shows itself. And I would think yes. So one of the things that I teach my students in my Reiki training is to really pay attention to how you experience Reiki energy. So a lot of people think that you're going to automatically feel fireworks or you're gonna feel like tingling or whatever. And yeah, that happens for a lot of people, but it's not the only way that you feel Reiki. Some people, like if you are uh, someone who has a stronger intuition that's visual, right? I, don't, I always forget which Claire is which, but I'm like clairvoyance, clairvoyance. <laughs> if you are a more clairvoyant intuitive, then you may, when you're practicing Reiki, see more colors, shapes, symbols, visuals. You have the intuition that's like, you just know things and you don't really know how you know them, but it's just like a deep gut feeling, then those things are likely to come out when you're doing Reiki. So I would say yes, it definitely helps strengthen your clairs, it helps strengthen your intuition, but it also helps you develop your relationship with your intuition. Kathy asks, how do you hold on to the magic and positivity? I feel like I am losing it and I'm in a funk. Um, that's very normal. <laughs> I am not 100% positive all the time. I am not 100% happy all the time. I have my own struggles and issues that I go through, um, my own mental health stuff that I'm working through. So I would be really weary of anyone in the spiritual space that claims to be 100% positive 100% of the time because we're all human and that's just not, <laughs> it's just not how life is. Whenever I get into a funk, I simply follow what feels good. But it could mean, you know, doing a yoga practice, doing a Reiki practice, doing meditation with crystals, or it could mean like sitting on the couch and watching an entire season of Gossip Girl with a bowl of macaroni and cheese in my lap. 
follow what feels good that's your way out of a funk. <laughs> we all go through seasons that we feel a little funky or less than positive. And for me, it always comes down to what feels good right now in this moment. Does it feel good to go to bed early? Does it feel better to stay up late? Does it feel good to take a long shower? Would I rather take a long bath? And giving yourself those like simple options, right? And, and with everything you do, it doesn't have to these, be these big grand habits. It could be like, do I want an iced coffee or a hot coffee? Do I wanna go to walk for my dog? Do I wanna sit on the couch? Do I wanna read a book? Do I wanna play a video game? Like everything you do, just lean into what feels good and that's gonna eventually bring you out of that funk. I really feel like the times where I have been deepest into a funk, it's because I am grinding away at doing something that I don't want to do, or I'm grinding against discomfort for too long, and I'm not filling myself back up. But when you lean into things that feel good, no matter how big or how small they are, that's like pouring back into your cup every single time you make that choice. What is the best and easiest way to charge and cleanse crystals? This is from Jessica on Instagram. So there are a couple of different ones that I think are easier, but the two that I think are easiest are the brown rice method or using your own energy. And I like to give these two options because if you're new to sensing and shifting energy, using your own energy could feel like that does not seem easy. <laughs> I know when I first started, like using my own energy felt like way out there, like there's no way that could work. So I want to honor that. But if you're interested in using your own energy to cleanse and charge your crystals, check out the last video that I posted about channeling Reiki and that'll help you out. The brown rice method, if you followed me on any of my social medias for a while, you've definitely heard me talk about this, but it is the ultimate method. So you just take a bowl of brown rice. I prefer organic brown rice. I just think it's a little bit closer to, um, you know, kind of the natural energy of the earth, but really you can experiment with any rice. Put it in any kind of bowl. I keep mine in like a glass Tupperware container. And then you simply stick your crystals in the rice. You can do more than one crystal. You can completely bury them or just kind of place them on top. It doesn't really matter. Make sure the rice is not cooked, like dry rice. Don't cook the rice. <laughs> I tend to leave my crystals in the rice overnight, but a couple hours will do it, but you can really leave them as long as you want. I store a few of mine in there. This cleanses and charges your crystals, so it's a one-stop shop. You're done. You just take them out, set an intention, go about your day. I go over all of the information about how this works and all the other methods for cleansing and charging crystals in my beginner crystal crash course. So if you haven't checked that out yet, I'll leave it linked below. This one comes from Jess on Instagram. How do we use crystals and Reiki to see where there are energy blockages in our body? I love this question. So I'm going to lead you through the practice that I like. This will be like an abbreviated version. And if you want me to do like a whole video on this, let me know in the comments. But what I like to do is warm up my hands. So I do like a body scan. So you bring your hands over your body and I always start with the crown. I just kind of notice how the energy is moving between my hands and between the crown. And then coming down, doing the whole body slowly. And you'll notice, like as you start to do this, there's gonna be areas where you might feel a little something something, and then there might be areas where you don't feel much at all. And so if I don't feel much at all between my hands or my body, then that I linger on. I'm just setting the intention to release anything that's ready to release and invite in anything that's ready to support me. So you can do that. You can do the same thing with crystals. You can use a crystal that way and just notice how you're feeling the energy move in your body or in your hands. You can also use a pendulum and I like to ask like show me um, open, show me closed and see how it moves. Put this over each of your chakras and just notice how it moves. And I kind of wait until it becomes a, um, a more fluid circle rather than kind of jaggedy. You could also take a picture of yourself and do this over the picture if lying down and like holding your arm up doesn't feel comfortable. If you want me to do a whole tutorial, let me know. I'd be happy to make a video on that. What is the best advice you can give to a person trying to become a social influencer? Ooh. <laughs> Um, 
I mean, there's so much advice I could give on that. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I my TikTok blew up last year. Last February, it went from 3,000 followers to half a million followers in a week, and it's been just a wild year, an absolutely life-changing, exhilarating, exhausting, frustrating, um, anxiety-ridden, joy-ridden, passion-ridden year. It's been it's been truly amazing. Um, so my advice would be just start posting. Like I know everyone gives this advice, but honestly, just start now. Like your first 100 posts are going to suck. They're gonna suck compared to what you're going to make a year from now. So you might as well just get those first like 100 posts out of the way. And the faster you can do that, the faster you're gonna start to get a sense of what you like to talk about, what you like to post about, what you like as far as like a medium. Do you enjoy long form content? Do you prefer TikTok content? Do you prefer Instagram stories? Do you prefer Instagram reels? Do you pictures, videos, etc. It'll get you into the habit of creating a lot of content so that you can figure out what feels aligned to you, what fits your values and what you're trying to share with the world. And you'll get really good at creating content and editing content. And the faster you pump out that first like 100 pieces of content or whatever, 100 is an arbitrary number, but you know, the first, the first dump of content essentially, um, the faster you're going to get over that fear of like, oh, what if somebody I know sees this? Like, what if, uh, you know, what if I'm not good at this? Like, what if nobody sees this? Like, nobody's gonna see it at, at the start. So you might as well pump out a ton of content while you're trying to figure yourself out when nobody's seeing it. And then from there, it's like a fine tuning. Like, what do you really enjoy creating? What do you enjoy talking about? What value can you provide to your audience? And just like dive into that as you get as you get comfortable. If you want me to make a whole video on like what I've learned in the last year as an influencer, content creator, whatever you wanna call me, um, let me know. I definitely have some wild stories and some things that I wish I knew a year ago. <laughs> what does an energy blockage in my receptive hand mean and how can I clear it? So generally speaking, like if it's your receptive hand and it's feeling blocked, then that to me says that you are either not wanting to receive a certain energy or you're not allowing yourself to receive a certain energy. There's like a part of you that's putting a force field up, whether that's physically, mentally, emotionally, subconsciously. So the way that I would clear that is to start to figure out what the root cause of that. I'm a big fan of looking at the body and the energy as a whole picture. So like you are not separate from your mind. You're not separate from your job. You're not separate from your relationships. You're not separate from your subconscious. It's all connected. So however you uh, feel most comfortable getting in and taking a look at that block, whether it's through meditation or through an energy healing session, through yoga, through movement, through journaling, through therapy, through talking it out with a friend, whatever helps you get to the root of like, okay, what am I, where is my force field, right? Like, what am I not wanting to come into my space? Or what am I afraid to come into my space? It may or may not be like a thing that you're actually like logically afraid of. It could be something grander. And I don't know your situation, so I can't get more specific from that. <laughs> Getting clear on what that is is going to help you create movement around it. And if you're really like, I have no idea what it is, then sit in meditation and focus on that physical feeling. How do you know that there is a block? What specifically do you feel? Really look at it. Does it have a texture? Does it have a temperature? Does it have a color or a shape? What happens when you sit with that? Really study it and invite it to share with you whatever it has to say. And that could come to you as a message, that could be a visual, that could be anything. Just be open to it. And then if it feels safe to you, invite it to take up more space. Invite it to fill whatever part of you it needs to. And see if that allows for some movement. Because it's in your hand, you could also hold a crystal in your hand. I would go with whichever one you feel called towards. Like 
hover your hand over your collection and pick the one that you're like, ooh, that one. What are the effects of a Reiki attunement physically and emotionally? Great question. A Reiki attunement is essentially opening your energy up to receive Reiki energy much more efficiently. So I like to compare it to like taking a radio dial and just like tuning it to the right station so that you can hear the music you want to hear. And this is done by a Reiki master teacher to a Reiki student, typically on some kind of one-on-one -on -one live setting. So if it's online via Zoom or in person. So the attunement effects uh, really depend on the person. Typically when I'm doing attunements in my training, a lot of times people will have varying experiences between feeling tingles or feeling heat or coolness. Some people say they feel just like a sense of safety or a sense of peace or relaxation, restoration, balance. Other people may see visuals, colors, pictures, images, memories. So it all kind of depends on how energy presents itself to you. So going back to those clairs, right? Like, are you someone who sees things or hears things or feels things or just knows things? Uh, a lot of times what you feel or experience during an attunement will align with that clair that is most strong for you. After the fact, there's typically what some people call like a, a Reiki detox or an energetic detox. I don't know how I feel about that word. I think of it more as an alignment than a detox. Detox to me uh, sounds like, I don't know, like a slim belly tea or something like that. I don't know. Once you become attuned to Reiki energy, your system starts to crave alignment. It wants you to be on your true path. It wants to align you with your purpose and the things that make your heart sing. So you may start to notice situations come up and you're like, ooh, that doesn't feel good. And when you leave that situation, you're like, oh, that feels better. So you might notice those like intuitive nudges towards or away from certain things or certain people become stronger. In the first level of attunement, typically this alignment process will show up in physical symptoms. So you might notice your nose is running or your eyes are watering or uh, you may have a dull headache or you may sleep a lot or you may have a hard time sleeping. And these are all just ways of your system trying to sort out this new energy and trying to kind of come into center with it. And the good news is once you've been Reiki attuned, you can use Reiki on yourself to clear those symptoms. So if you can't sleep, you do a little bit of Reiki, you're asleep. Uh, if your eyes start to run, that's just a clearing process. If your nose runs, you start sneezing, yawning, that's another popular one, burping. <laughs> Those are all ways of energy moving out of the body. As far as emotional symptoms go, this really depends person to person. Some people have heightened emotions right after the attunement or like 24 hours to three weeks after the attunement. This might be a time where you are um, sad and you're not really sure why or you're anxious and you're not really sure why or you might be the opposite side of the spectrum like really excited or really passionate or really focused after the attunement and all of these things are just a way of your system trying to find balance and again the good news is you can do Reiki on yourself and it helps kind of bring you closer to balance you're not so high or low this one's from Simone and I love this question for those who are Reiki certified already would you ever offer a workbook versus the class or offer something that helps us create our own practice yeah Simone I would love to <laughs> I've actually been noodling around a couple of ideas on how I can support uh, students and practitioners that have already been through my program or people who have already been Reiki trained and certified and still want my support of some kind. So if you have ideas of things you would want to see included in a workbook like that, I would love to know in the comments. How are habits of drinking slash smoking changed or affected with Reiki healing or attunement? Once you attune to Reiki energy, your body starts to crave alignment. So you might notice if you're like a casual drinker or a casual smoker, those things might not feel as good to you anymore. Once you feel that state of balance, it's hard to enjoy going out of it. Um, I, speaking from my own experience, I was a heavy, heavy, heavy drinker in college. Like, you would find me on a frat house on a Monday or Tuesday night, like just pound in PBRs. And I also chain smoked cigarettes during that time and just did not get a whoop daddy about my health. So 
I found before I went through my Reiki attunement, I was sort of bobbing in and out of that lifestyle. Like when I left college, I was less likely to get wasted on a weekday, but I was still going out to the bars with my friends on weekends and like staying up until 4 a.m. and just like living that life. Even though like <laughs> the irony was like by day I was like meditating and doing yoga and like drinking my green juice. And then at night I was just like completely counteracting that life <laughs> with like 75 cent Miller High Lifes, you know? So what I found once I went through my Reiki attunement, that lifestyle started to appeal to me less and less. I instead wanted to do things that nourished my body. I wanted to spend more time taking care of my body, taking care of my mind, spending less time staying up all night and more time going to bed at a reasonable hour, uh, spending less time you know, drinking alcohol and more time drinking water. <laughs> At least for me, it really made it difficult for me to enjoy that lifestyle anymore. I can't speak for everyone, but uh, I know once I became a Reiki master, I really like, I, I had no interest in alcohol. I mean, I maybe have like 12 drinks a year on like a year that I drink a lot. So. It's just not, it's just not something I'm interested in. I'm more interested in like preserving the health and wellness of my mind and my body and soul. And I really do believe that Reiki is connected to that, but everyone's experience is different. I don't necessarily think that if you do Reiki, you can't drink or smoke. I don't feel that way at all. I don't think the world or energy works in that kind of duality or that kind of dichotomy. But you may notice just your relationship to it changes. That being said, like I would discourage you from doing Reiki while under the influence. But I mean, if you drink or smoke and you also do Reiki, they're not gonna like, it's not gonna ruin your Reiki experience. This question is, would you combine inner child healing with any of these practices? If so, how? Yeah. For sure. So inner child healing, I feel like can go with any of these practices, right? So that's like nurturing that young part of you that's like part of your memories and your subconscious mind and your body. If we think about the things that happen to us when we're kids, they affect every part of our lives. The amount of time you spend crawling as a kid affects the strength of your spine as an adult. So like that's just one example, like one very benign example of how your inner child really like affects who you are and how you move through the world. So if your inner child is holding on to pain or trauma or, you know, feelings of unworthiness, like that is going to play out in every area of your life, physically in the tissues of your body, as well as mentally, emotionally, and how you just carry yourself through life and relate to other people. And that's really like the name of the game with these practices, right? Like that's why we work with crystals. That's why we work with Reiki. That's why we practice mindfulness. That's why we do any sort of energy healing is to help soothe that inner part of us so that we can come into greater alignment and be less affected by anything outside of us or anything outside of this present moment. Like that's the name of the game. So I would say like, however you're doing inner child healing now, these practices will support you. So if it's Reiki and therapy, right? You go to therapy, maybe you're doing Reiki on yourself in the waiting room, or like I'm doing Reiki on myself through the whole session, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so you have like a certain affirmation or a certain visual that helps soothe your inner child and you can program that into a crystal. And then anytime you are wanting to work with that part of yourself or wanting to soothe that part of yourself, maybe you just place that crystal somewhere on your body. I see these practices can complement whatever work you're doing on your inner self, on your subconscious, on your inner child, whatever you want to call it these practices will support you. I always love doing these question and answer videos because they give me a really clear sense of what you're wanting to learn more about and what I can bring more clarity to in terms of my content and what I'm sharing with you all. So if you have a question that I didn't get a chance to answer, go ahead and pop it in the comments or send me a DM over on Instagram so that I can get that answer to you. If you're interested in training with me and learning more about Reiki, I do have a couple of Reiki trainings coming up. These are all live and virtual. They include an attunement and a certification 
purification and they're just like my favorite thing that I get to do. <laughs> Reiki 1, we focus a lot on the science of self-healing and how Reiki works. And Reiki 2, we focus on the science of symbols and distance healing. So if you're interested in either of those trainings, I will leave a link to them down below. They are limited in space, so go ahead and sign up for those before they sell out. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that, and I will talk to you soon. Bye!